Hello and welcome to Cobot Retro Tech. Hope you're having an amazing day. Now, I needed a little bit of an easier video to produce so that I can give myself some time to focus on some larger projects that I'm planning on. So, we're doing a Goodwill haul today. Going forward, I do plan on providing some in-store footage a la LGR's Thrift series, but for now, this is what I got. Item number one is this official, at least official looking and feeling, Winnie Nunchuck. I picked this up because I already have a Winnie Nunchuck, but it's one of those third party ones. And I mean, it works, but it doesn't feel good quality because, you know, it's a third party controller. This one, however, is a first party controller. And I can tell because it feels really good. The buttons are not like super tactile, but tactile enough to where it feels like a first-party nunchuck. And although it's been a really long time since I've owned an official nunchuck, I still remember how my official nunchucks felt way back in the day when I had a Wii. The second item was this, um, actually I can't quite tell what the brand is, it's covered over the sticker, but I got myself a portable CD player. Not that I don't already have devices that can't play CDs, I just, I wanted a standalone CD player so I didn't have to turn on an Xbox or a PlayStation just to listen to a CD, if I should want to listen to a CD. The next item I got is somewhat interesting in a very odd way. And it's kind of more of a mainstream kind of odd than Odd, odd. I got myself an Xbox 360 Connect, and my Slim Model 360 works natively with this Connect, so I don't have to bother with the official adapter. I know, I know, I know. The 360 era Connect, especially, is very well known for poor developer support, poor developer implementation, blah blah blah. I just got it because I want to play a couple of Connect games again. I'm not even sure if I have enough room to do connect things, but uh, I have a connect now. Cool. Now this next item might be the most interesting out of all the items in the how the heck was this a goodwill kind of way. Because this item, I shit you not, is an Apple Airport device and, and, and a straight up airport router. You know, Ethernet ports, USB, there's the power input, all of that. It's a genuine airport router. <laughs> Problem is, I don't have the power supply for this, but at $8. Oh man, you can't really see that with the wide angle camera. But this, this is a very good deal for what it is, even without the... Power supply, if only for the fact that I plan, or at least was planning on doing a bridge router kind of thing between my main router and my G3. And that's because I didn't want to have a long Ethernet cable running between my router and my G3 at all times. Believe me, Ethernet cables suck to step on if you're not wearing shoes. So. That's why I got this thing. This thing will get its own video, or at least will co-star in a video with my G3 in the future once I can get a power supply for this. So be on the lookout. And the last thing I got that probably wasn't worth it, especially at the price that I got, I got an X game console. Yes, I am aware that this is a cheap Chinese knockoff of a console. I know this is a knockoff of the Xbox One. I know this is a shitty family clone com computer system, whatever. I got it because I wanted to experience the hellhole that is these systems for myself. I've heard of these systems a lot, particularly from the ReRes Worst Ever series, so I wanted to give this a shot myself. No, I don't expect this to be a quality system in any regard, but I just wanted to get it for the experience. Problem being, 
I think Goodwill drastically overestimated this thing's value because they sold it to me for $40. I don't know if they're overinflating the value of this thing or if I'm just stupid for buying it, but either way, I've got it now. Alright, for test number one, I've gone ahead and dusted my old Wii U, or new Wii U, or... Well, it's not new to me. <sighs> you know what I'm trying to say. So I'm just gonna go ahead and boot up... Let's do Smash Bros. I'm gonna go ahead... Connect. There we go. Alright, Wiimote still works, that's a good sign. I just want to play a game here to test my uh, new nunchuck. Okay, that's a good sign. Doesn't seem to be any drift. Yeah. This nunchuck feels pretty good. Uh, you know what? I should actually go to the controls section. So I don't necessarily have to launch a whole game. I just gotta see what's going on here. Okay. Yeah, why is that? Oh, tap jump is enabled. That's a no. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it feels pretty good. not great at Smash Bros, especially with this kind of controller layout, but hey, got a new nunchuck. Yay! <laughs> a little bit of a bummer that the nunchuck and the Wiimote don't match, but at least I have a good quality nunchuck now. And at some point, I'm going to find the first party Wiimote. Maybe not necessarily at... Goodwill, but I'm gonna find one eventually. Alright, so I've gone ahead and hooked up the connect. Let's see what happens. For some reason, I have a bad feeling about this. Oh, that's right. I stole my 360's HDMI cord for something else. Okay, now let's turn the 360 on again. Okay, good sign. Here's the blinking connect light. Now, if I remember correctly, it should move once everything is boot up, booted up. One thing that the Kinect V2 didn't do on the Xbox One, it didn't have a, a motor for adjusting. Ah, oh, man, it's been... God. It's been a very long time. Somewhere between five and eight years since I've seen this. On one of my own consoles. And yes, I am aware that the B on the Kinect is missing. Really? Car alarm right now? Thanks for ruining my video there, dude. You need to recalibrate your sensor's audio if you... Don't, you may experience problems with chat and speech recognition. Really? Stop! I am filming a video! Are you kidding me? Well, that was ridiculous. <laughs> Alright, uh, audio calibration. If I remember correctly, I think this is gonna get loud. This test sound will help connect. 
orient your connect to your room. Audio setup may affect connect, blah blah. Nostalgia is a hell of a drug. <clears throat> okay. I was going to do hello and welcome to Cub Out Retro Tech, but I uh, <laughs> can't exactly. I got to read the prompt. One, two, three, four, five. Speaking too loudly? Come on. One, two, three, four, five. All right. There's all that. Hey, look, it's me. Oh, yeah, waving your hand for connect. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let me move this camera so I can put myself in a better view of the connect. Okay, there's that figured out. Uh, let's actually calibrate the rest of the connect. Connect tuner, there we go. Tracking. Ooh. That motor does not sound healthy. I can't. Well, a little better. Uh, actually, I still need it tilted up a bit. I don't have much room here. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, tracking, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I think most of the Connect's downfall really is how developers implemented it. Not necessarily that the Connect itself is bad. What do you mean no player detected? <laughs> What, what do you mean, no player detected? It can detect. It sees my upper body. Face not clear. Okay, that's just the lighting. Well, I mean, there's not much I can do. I don't have that much space. I'd have more space if I didn't have a couch, but then I wouldn't have a couch. I'll set that up later. Wave for connect. Hey! <laughs> Man, I forgot how cool this is. Like, yeah, it's, it's gimmicky, but it's also, like, cool. Connect is cooler than I remember it being. Even with all the problems that the Connect faced during its lifetime, it's still really cool to use. Makes me almost want to connect for the Xbox One. But. Makes me.
makes me almost want to connect for the uh, next generation. But problem is, my One X is not compatible with the V2 Connect. Uh, so I'd need to get an adapter, kind of like if I was uh, trying to adapt the Connect to original 360. Okay, yeah, it's, it, it's struggling a little bit, but I mean, it's still, <laughs> I mean, it works. It's obviously working. The motor for height adjustment is obviously not super happy, but it friggin' works. But now it's time for the X game. Again, yes, I am aware that this is a knockoff console, but I got it because I specifically wanted to check out one of these things. I fully expect it to not be a good experience, but I'm just gonna deal with it anyways. Okay, right out of the box, we got two rip-off PlayStation controllers, which I'm actually curious to see on whether or not this will work with PC. So I'll check that out later. But more importantly, we got the unit itself, which, as you might expect, is incredibly light and looks like an Xbox One S. Of course. But weirdly enough, we've got power, we've got HDMI, we've got an SD card slot, actually. That's kind of cool. But AV. We've got composite on this thing, which tells me that it's not capable of anything anywhere near HD, which I kind of knew to begin with. Let's see. Uh, for some reason, we've got two power adapters. Oh. This is a mini USB power adapter. I actually uh, might be able to use that for work. Because we kind of needed one. I'm not sure why this was included with the unit, considering that this does not have mini USB for power. Although it could totally work off of USB power. Let's see. All right. Uh... We've got another power supply, which I'm pretty sure wasn't included for this system because the power jack here is too small. Yeah, that's that's definitely too small. So I have two power supplies that I can't use for this system. That's weird. We got this mess of cables, which isn't wanting to cooperate. It looks like we've got the actual intended power cable in here, which, funnily enough, is a USB cable. So why couldn't it just work with something a little bit more standard, like mini or micro USB? Like, come on. Like, come on. It's already USB. Just use micro USB. That's easier. All right, well, I'll go ahead and get this plugged in and see what the hell happens. So in the box, we have this weird, non-standard USB cable. Two power supplies that we can't use with the system. I believe this HDMI cable came with it. We've got AV cables, which I expected. We've got some documentation. Weirdly enough, a... Uh, Manual for an air cooler that I believe I have. It's broken though. And the weirdest part of all, a blank mini DVD. Like, out of everything that quote unquote came with the system, which I believe that most of the stuff that came with the system actually wasn't from the manufacturer because Goodwill, but uh, out of everything that came with this console, that's possibly the most perplexing, because this thing doesn't have a friggin' DVD drive. And there would be no drivers that I would need to install on a PC, so what the heck. Alright, so I've got my Wii U plugged in just so I can power this console, and we'll see what happens. This thing is so 
Ooh, look at that. It's got a little LED light on it. That's kind of cool. For a knockoff console, anyways. <laughs> oh my god, I have to see that again. <laughs> oh my god, that straight up has, what was that, Windows 98? It was either 98 or 95, but they're straight up like, wow. I can't believe this thing straight up has a Windows startup sound as its startup sound. That's the grounds for a lawsuit in and of itself. Um, all that being said, though, this controller actually feels not too bad. It feels about on par as uh, regular PS2, PS3 third-party controllers. But uh, for some reason, that menu isn't wanting to collaborate. This is hilarious, man. <laughs> Out of everything that could have happened with this system, that is what I expected the least for the a freaking Windows startup sound on a rip off Xbox like what okay I fully expect the emulation performance of these systems to be totally bad and right off the bat um not super familiar with Neo Geo but I have a feeling that's not at least not a uh, an era appropriate Neo Geo game, um, and every single game here that is shown on this system doesn't actually appear on these systems. At least they got Mario and Sonic correct for the GBA and Mega Drive slash Genesis stuff, but like, come on. Oh, oh, yeah, typical PlayStation fashion, the bottommost button is back when the rightmost button is accept. All right, let's uh, play some NES games. We got 1, 2, and 3, 14, Super Mario's, got Super Mario 2 twice, Super Mario 6. Four, nine, Mario Party nine, okay. <laughs> All right, let's see what the emulation performance is with NES games. Oh, that's not good. I mean, sounds all kind of off, but like really, the input latency is admittedly not great, but not as bad as I expected. <laughs> Sound-wise though, this sounds like this console was put through a blender. Not that I'm... Oh, wow. <laughs> I can't... Oh, it was really hard for me to jump and run at the same... Yeah, look. Look at this. It's really picky on when I can run and jump at the same time. That's really weird. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, the, the analog button here on this controller... It works. At least it lights up that button. I don't know if it actually enables the analog sticks. And the, the analog sticks work regardless, but okay. Uh, 
at the oh oh there's a menu okay i did not expect that skipping what does that mean frame oh it just made the emulation faster i believe it's skipping frames or something weird i did not expect there to be a menu yeah push uh, start and select there's a menu oh and you can remap the buttons that's legitimately pretty cool what does instant archive do is that ah uh, that's uh save states okay that's actually something really cool like if that actually works then that's actually going to give this thing a leg up compared to a lot of the other knockoff stations. So I just saved my progress. So if I go back to Super Mario, I should be able to just pick up where I left off there. Full disclosure, though, why we would... <laughs> Full disclosure, though, I would still very much rather play my... And yes, classic than this piece of crap, but I mean, if this is all you got, it's not great, but it's better than I expected, at least on the NES side. Instant archive, load. Hey, look at that. That actually worked. Cool. It's still kind of running like crap, but like... <laughs> Seriously though, this this controller feels a lot better than I expected. Like seriously. Uh oh. Okay, put a little too much stress on it. Yeah, it's probably gonna break, but this controller is legit better than I expected. It's not great, but I'm I'm not kidding. It it feels on par with a lot of third party controllers for PlayStation uh line. Thumbsticks don't immediately do anything. I'm gonna go ahead and check out some of the other systems. I know people give these Chinese companies a lot of flack for intellectual property theft, but if China actually gave a crap about those kinds of laws, we wouldn't have amazing systems like these. And I say amazing very sarcastically, but still. Alright, let's try out Sonic 1. Oh, 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 yeah, I needed to press start first. Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay, well, I mean, still sounds like it was put through a blender, but again, this is responding more than I thought it would. Okay, of course. Still, like, occasional shutters, and the sound isn't great, but like, wow. Seriously. <laughs> So far, this is like legitimately impressing me. I I expected to to laugh at it and cringe at it like they do with re-res with systems like this, but this is legitimately like a step above a lot of those other bottom tier knockoff consoles. Okay, buttons to set, blah 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 blah. Save. Yeah, I. Seems to be more or less the same emulator. 
Okay, that's weird. When I selected quit on Super Mario, it just went back to the game. But this went back to the main menu. Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic Adventure 2. Okay, yeah, totally. <laughs> Sonic 3D Blast? Oh, I'm, I, it's actually been a long time since I played that one. Oh. Not a great start, but seems to be roughly on par. To the rest of the system so far. Again, it's still struggling, but it's better than I expected. Although it doesn't look like the colors are super accurate with this game. And you know what? This is a game where the analog sticks could actually make sense. Doesn't seem to control very well, but that could just be the fact that I'm not used to isometric games. Yeah, this is definitely functioning better than I expected. Like, I don't recommend... I don't recommend you go out and buy a system like this just to have a system like this, but at the same time, this specific system, the X game, functioning better than I expected. Oh, I think that's what happened last time when I was playing Mario. I hit uh, the back button instead of the accept button. Um, I think this is a ROM hack of Sonic where you play as Amy. Oh, Angry Birds. I believe this is someone's um, homebrew project of Angry Birds. <laughs> but it was uh, made for Sega Genesis. <laughs> oh, then. Really? You couldn't at least attempt physics? Okay. What? I shot one bird. How is that game over? Okay, no, I'm not gonna give that more time. Oh, uh, we got Golden Axe. We got Fantasia's Castles. Castle of Illusion? I thought that was a much later game. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of Epic Mickey. Yeah, that was a much later series, but not this one. Uh, hello? I'd like to play the game, please. This button right here is jump. It's not a usual button, but, you know, to be fair, a uh, Sega Genesis controller doesn't exactly map correctly to modern controllers. As modern as a PlayStation 2 controller is, anyways. If you're supposed to jump on the enemies, why didn't that happen the first time around? Okay. I mean, I'm not super familiar with this game, but it actually seems to be running more or less correctly. I could be wrong, though. Again, I'm not super familiar with this game, but the sound emulation seems to be correct. That hit detection is what's... Oh, man. Anyways, well, I, okay.
Fantasia, Animaniacs, blah, 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 blah. Some of these, some of these probably aren't proper games, or at least games meant for this system. But, I mean, I'm kind of impressed with the emulation so far. NES is usually a little difficult to emulate. I mean, we're dropping a couple of frames, but it's not too bad. There's already a save file on here somehow. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just like the Genesis emulation. I mean, visually there's artifacts just like with the NES and Genesis emulation. But sound emulation apparently has gotten better with more powerful systems. Like, how does that work? Yeah, we're, we're occasionally dropping frames, but this is, like, totally friggin' playable. Like, how, how the heck? How? How? How the heck does this happen? Again, I'm not saying you go out and buy one of these systems, but honestly, this is performing better than I expected. GBA might be a different story, though. Or maybe not. Maybe the emulation would be the same as SNES and, and Genesis. Okay, yeah, that's definitely not right. Yeah, that sound emulation was definitely not correct. I'm not super familiar with the GBA Pokemon games, but I know how it should sound. Oh god, this sounds horrible. No, I'm not sitting through that. Uh, Mario Kart? I assume this is Cir Super Circuit? Okay. <sighs> I think this is a very similar system to what Rerez has uh, looked at in the past, because I remember it exactly playing out like that with the sound. Hey, Toad! Yay! is killing it and I don't mean a good kind of killing it it's 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 killing the enjoyment honestly but technically it is playable it's just ear rapey Yeah, that sound. That is gross and offensive to my gamer music ears. <laughs> yeah, the sound emulation is like mostly okay, but then very, very not. Sometimes I wonder how these consoles make it out to the market in their state. 
Oh, this is different. This game is for use in the United States of America, Canada, and Mexico only. Screw off with your region locking. Okay. Uh, again, I'm not super familiar with this game, but other than a couple of uh, little audio hitches every few frames, it looks like things are working more or less correctly. Except there's a lot of flickering, which I suspect wasn't actually part of the original arcade experience. Genuinely, even despite the graphical issues, this is actually kind of fun. single game right now because I have a limited amount of time for looking at the stuff right now and unfortunately I can't look at the airport device because I don't have its power supply although it would be kind of funny if one of these power supplies actually could power that no no the the airport needs 12 volt 1.8 amp I don't that would work even if it could power adapter is too small okay uh huh. So I can't look at the airport right now, unfortunately, but everything else has been pretty much more or less worth it, which is really cool. I, even, even this knockoff system right here was a lot better of a deal than I expected it to be, even though I, be I still believe that uh, Goodwill drastically overestimated the cost of that box. It's still really cool. Still really cool that it works better than I honestly expected. Still not great. I still don't recommend you uh, go and pick one up. But it's better than I expected. Now, a little disclaimer here. I don't condone piracy, so I don't normally condone these kinds of consoles. But I wanted to experience at least one of these like this once in my life. And I think I'm going to end up keeping it. So those noises right there, I was just loading some batteries into this guy because it takes double A's. And I just got to figure out how to turn it on. Hey, look at that. We've got a display and a battery indicator and it sounded like the... Um, Disc mechanism was trying to detect whether or not there's a disc. Uh huh. And here's an open button. Bam. I'm going to go ahead and grab a CD, see if that works.
Okay, uh, I happen to have a CD of my pretty much only favorite R&B artist, uh, Zap. This is the... I don't know if this album actually has like a proper name other than Zap, but... It's the one with more bounce than the outside. So I'm gonna go ahead, put that CD in here. All right. We got the power on. Looks like it's spinning. Oh, the hold switch is on. Yeah, remember hold switches? It was uh, pretty popular on CD players, but also on the original iPod. Seems to be reading the disc, okay? Yeah! Yeah, I got myself a portable CD player, that's cool. The cool thing about digital audio is it's not really any better or worse on a cheap system than it is on a really expensive system. That's really cool. I half expected it to not work, but hey, it works. Let's hop over to one of my PCs and we'll see if uh, one of these knockoff PlayStation controllers can work on PC since it works over USB. Alright, if it's going to work, it's going to work on your Linux. Alright, we got a terminal here. LSU. Okay, what? I pushed a button and it did things. Okay, USB. Okay. Twin Shock Gamepad. Look at that. It actually can work. It can actually work on PCs. Looks like it's it's a Dragon Rise Incorporated PC Twin Shock Gamepad. All right. Does that mean I can launch Steam and play Portal with this? Well, I don't think I have. Wait, do I have Portal One? Installed? I do not. So let's go Portal 2. If, it, if it'll work with Portal 1, it'll work with Portal 2. So we'll see if it'll work with Portal. That'd be kind of cool if it did. Alright, we're launching into Portal 2. Uh, considering LS USB, you can see the controller. I think this will work with Steam OK. Config loaded Portal 2 standard controls. I think that means this will work. Hey, hey, would you look at that? Man, this is actually gonna work? I did not expect it to actually work. <laughs> the controllers from the X game knockoff frickin' console can actually work with PCs. I don't know if it works with Windows, but it obviously works with Linux, which tells me it could work. Shh. It tells me that it can work with Windows. Okay. GLaDOS, shut up. But the... Okay, weird thing. Okay, these buttons function as buttons, right? Well, so does the analog stick. So it works, but not quite as what you would expect. Oh! Um... This is weird. Okay. Um, is there a config I can change in the in-game? Okay, I don't know if this analog stick is broken or what the heck is going on, but it's not wanting to function correctly. Let's try the other controller. Okay, I grabbed the other controller. Let's go ahead. Okay, push the analog button. Yeah, it's still not functioning correctly, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's because of how Steam is handling the controller or what the heck is going on here. I could look at PS2 emulation at some point, but 
that's kind of outside of the scope of this video. This is borderline outside of the scope of this video, but that's something I've actually been curious about for quite some time. Well, that was an interesting adventure. I didn't expect every single thing save for the Apple Airport um, to work. Um, I don't know if the airport's going to work. I don't know if that's going to work yet because I don't have the power supply, but literally everything else I grabbed worked, which is unprecedented for Goodwill. <laughs> I didn't expect anything to work, and um, although the experience with the X game console is not great, it's better than I expected. Again, for the last time in this video, I don't re recommend you guys go out and buy that thing, but... It's honestly better than I expected. And with that, that's been this Cobalt Retro Tech video. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe if you would like to. And if you really enjoyed my content, I now have a Patreon. And I have some other socials linked in the description below, as well as that Patreon page. That'll be it for this video. See you guys in the next one.